vibrate. It's mom and Paul. Mom is crying. She's begging me not to move to Florida. Paul interjects, trying to diffuse the argument before it begins. He doesn't realize how little I care, how far gone I am. Cassidy Hutchinson joins us now. How are you doing? Doing well, Nicole. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. We've, we've covered you for so long and talked about you, and I've watched all your interviews, but I find, and I know Mark Salter very well, I find the, the beauty in the bearing of your soul on, on every page. And I want to ask you about what you spend a lot of time writing about, and that's your, your family. Will, will you talk about that moment where, where your mom is? Because at this point on January 6th, you still plan to go to Mar-a-Lago, right? I did, and it wasn't really until about two days before January 20th, Inauguration Day, that I was not going to move down to Florida. Um, on January 6th, you know, my parents sort of had reservations about me moving to Florida once I made the decision to accept the president's offer. Um, you know, and in that moment, I knew what they were saying was true, and I knew that I should believe them. But there was that part of me that still felt that loyalty. And there was still the part of me as a loyal staffer in the administration that felt like January 6th was almost our fault. It was our fault for letting people around the president, people who were promoting these poisonous conspiracy theories, I felt it was our responsibility to stop January 6th from happening. And I felt that, you know, if I could go down to Florida and help relish some of whatever legacy there was left to relish, um, you know, it would, that was still my job to help them do so. You know, looking back now, and I think it's important to say in the book too, though, I wrote the book in real time, or at least I, I tried to write it right. as real time, so without points of reflection. So looking back now, I realize that it's, it was completely irrational and I should not have felt that way. Um, January 6th was the president's fault and there were a series of enablers that helped, helped it happen. But it wasn't my job and it wasn't the job of anybody else who was actually rational to stop what is, who is clearly an irrational man, Donald John Trump.